Andrew Detmer, a young middle-class boy, has purchased a new camera and begin recording in his room. His father, Richard Detmer, urges him to unlock the door, but he refuses since his father has been drinking. He pays a visit to his mother's room, Karen Detmer, who is dying of cancer, and she bids him a happy day. His cousin, Matt Garrity, drives him to school in his car on a regular basis. Matt looks after Andrew and behaves like a big brother to him. On the way, he informs Andrew about his thoughts on the book he just finished, from which Andrew deduces that there is no value in existing in any manner, that everything is worthless. Matt acknowledges this as well. When Matt arrives at school, he tells Andrew to get inside since he has a class in a few minutes. In some ways, he avoids entering the school with Andrew since Andrew is the most disliked boy in school, and he is the most bullied. Andrew is always filming everything at school, including during breaks and in class. He films everything as if it were a documentary and then speaks about it to an invisible audience. Meanwhile, several wicked guys mock him and harass him. Matt invites him to a nighttime party after school, but he declines since he does not drink. He tells Andrew that meeting new people in a different setting would help him feel better. But Andrew isn't convinced. In truth, Andrew's upbringing, namely his mother's illness, has made him exceedingly reticent. Instead of encouraging him, his father curses at him, destroying his personality. Andrew sets up his camera and videos himself working at night, when his father enters his room and scolds him for not unlocking the door in the morning. So, he becomes depressed and goes to the party with Matt, but not before remembering to bring his camera. Matt departs, directing him to interact with the others at the party and have a good time. Matt then runs into his school classmate, Cassie Letter, who is also filming the party with her camera for her vlog channel. She asks Matt a few questions, but he responds with incredibly complicated and philosophical responses. Cassie knows, upon hearing this, that Matt is still the dull one from school. Cassie walks away. Andrew is recording everyone having a good time at the party. Meanwhile, a guy misunderstands him and informs him that he is filming his girlfriend. He then strikes Andrew. He regards himself as useless and redundant. He goes out of the party and pours his heart out. When Steve Montgomery, a prominent high school guy, approaches him and begs him to grab his camera and stroll into the woods with him, because they have discovered something incredibly weird that they wish to capture on videotape. At first, Andrew believes it is all a hoax. But, at Steve's request, Andrew follows him into the woods, where Matt instructs them to follow him. Matt and Steve's manner suggests that they've had too much to drink. When Andrew arrives, he discovers a big hole in the earth radiating an extremely high frequency, similar to a harsh screeching sound. Steve is ecstatic and leaps into the hole as soon as he can. Matt pursues him, and Andrew is obliged to follow. As they descend, they discover that it resembles a cave. Andrew bans them from going any farther, but Steve walks further inside, where they discover a gigantic shining crystal with radiation emanating from it. Andrew's camera also begins to flicker, and he becomes terrified. The crystal transforms from blue to crimson as Steve approaches it. They begin to bleed from their nostrils. Steve believes it's going to be an exciting experience, but then the crystal explodes and strikes the three of them. Fortunately, they survive the ordeal. After a few days, they notice a change in themselves. They have telekinetic skills, allowing them to manipulate objects with their minds. Their noses bleed more when they use this ability. Baseballs are being thrown at each other by Matt, Steve, and Andrew. When Matt tosses the ball to Steve, it twists right and smacks Steve in the head. Matt then tosses the ball to Andrew, who utilizes his mental powers to catch the ball in mid-air. Andrew's nose starts bleeding, so he drops the ball. The three then play with the Lego pieces within, joining them without touching them. Andrew uses a drifting motion with his hands to create a whole Lego tower without touching any of the pieces. The three decide to return to the pit to learn more about the source of their strength, but they are unhappy to find it filled with muck. Forest police caution people to avoid the area since the ground is no longer solid. Steve and Andrew are on their way home when Steve inquires about Andrew's parents. He reveals that his mother is ill and that his father used to be a fireman. Richard was wounded in an accident a few years ago. As a result, he was no longer able to work as a fireman, so he remained at home and received government insurance. Steve also discusses his troubled relationship with his parents, as well as how he keeps himself occupied by participating in school politics. Andrew is laying in his bed, filming himself when he overhears his father on the phone, appealing for further medical assistance for his mother. Richard asks them to help him since his wife is ill and he needs more money. Matt, Steve, and Andrew are taking advantage of this talent for their own amusement and fun. As they employ telekinetic power, they develop mastery over it. Andrew is the most talented of the three, he no longer considers his life's deprivation. But when he goes home, his father's attitude and his mother's illness haunt him. He does not allow to unwind. He feels that he will be unable to do anything in life. Matt is spending most of his time with Andrew, while the other two mates are spending more time together. Most significantly, none of the events in the movie seem to be in focus. Instead, the whole film is shown as Andrew's camera footage. Andrew is gaining control of his skills. 
He makes good use of his abilities to manage the camera. He spends the day with his mother, trying to make her happy. His mother finally tells him that her life is short and that she wishes for him to fend for himself once she dies, since she knows that her husband will do nothing for Andrew. During their lunch break at school, the three buddies decide to test their abilities on others. Andrew notices a kid who taunts him at school as they walk by a store. Andrew initially pulls pranks on the youngster, and then the three of them terrify the customer. Steve moves an automobile in the parking lot and parks it somewhere else. When the owner arrives, she cannot locate her vehicle and believes it has been stolen. They're all laughing hysterically and having a good time. When a car from behind attempts to overtake and honks frequently, Andrew is in the car with Matt and Steve. Andrew's hand motion slightly moves the automobile to the other side, but the car falls into the river. Matt arrives just in time to rescue the guy. The guy would have perished if they hadn't intervened. Matt is furious with Andrew for exceeding his limit. Then Matt throws the dice, claiming that their power may harm or even eliminate individuals. They can get away with a little misbehavior, but nothing more. The following day, Matt drives Andrew to the location Steve has specified. On the way, Andrew asks him whether he's still furious at him, but Matt answers no. They both arrive at the location, but there is no sign of Steve, just his vehicle is parked there. They scour the area for Steve. Meanwhile, Andrew's camera is filming as well. But then, when they glance up, Steve is soaring through the air. This comes as a complete surprise to them, because Steve is flying in the air like Superman and instructs them both to do the same. Matt tries but fails, as does Andrew. Matt and Andrew are also in the air after some hard work. The three of them then fly through the clouds, reaching the sky like free birds. The three of them are playing in the sky when Steve loses his steadiness and begins to descend towards the earth owing to a passing aircraft. Andrew comes just in time to save Steve from collapsing. Steve is relieved to have survived and thankful to Andrew. Matt also approaches them, and they begin shouting and screaming in delight since they are the first people to fly in this manner. That night, the three of them plan a sleepover at Steve's place, during which Andrew tells them it was the finest day of his life and explains his sentiments further. The following day at school, they discuss which locations on the globe they would want to visit. Andrew expresses his desire for them to visit Tibet since he has heard that the monks there have the same capabilities, allowing them to learn more about their own abilities and that the location is incredibly beautiful and quiet. Matt bids them both farewell since it is his mother's birthday, and then takes off into the sky, disappearing from the view. He subsequently sees Cassie and hands her an envelope with funds to aid in the drought that Cassie mentioned in one of her vlogs. Cassie confronts Matt about his unexpected change. Matt claims that he is no longer the dull guy he once was, and that he now wants to keep himself happy. He asks Cassie to join him on a date, but Cassie slams the door without responding. Andrew and Steve are sitting on the roof of a building, and Steve tells Andrew that he is astounded at how he utilizes his skills since, whereas Andrew can handle his camera with accuracy, Steve cannot. Andrew informs him that he felt terribly alone before gaining power. He informs him that he and Matt have had limits since he went to high school. Steve recognizes Andrew's difficulty and wishes to assist him. He makes Andrew perform in the school talent show. Matt is absolutely unaware of what is going on. Karen is pleased to see Andrew happy as he comes to his mother to show his attire for the talent competition. As Andrew begins to walk away, Richard stops him and asks him why he doesn't go to school with Matt, adding that he suspects Andrew of going someplace other than school. Matt is filming the talent show when Cassie approaches him and asks how he's doing. Steve walks on stage and summons Andrew to perform, and Matt believes Andrew is done. Andrew stumbles about awkwardly at first, but then recovers and does his magic, which drives all of the kids insane. Together, Steve and Andrew put on a great concert, which instantly made Andrew popular at school. Matt and Andrew then attend a home party where all of the students greet him. Andrew now considers himself a celebrity. During the party, Andrew is approached by a girl with pink hair, who brings him upstairs to a room after a little conversation. Matt apologizes to Andrew on camera for his previous actions and expresses gratitude for his popularity and success. Cassie notices Matt and drags him away from the party. Steve informs on Andrew's camera that today is Andrew's special day and goes upstairs to congratulate Andrew. The girl emerges from the room, her hair in a state of disarray. Steve chuckles as he enters the room, but Andrew is enraged and orders Steve to leave. The following day, Andrew plays with the spider and then breaks it apart, revealing to his mind how unhappy he is at the moment. Richard approaches Andrew and expresses his sadness at his mother's condition, while Andrew is having fun with his pals. Richard informs him that he spends a lot of money on his education and has an expensive camera simply for his pastime. As Richard shouts at him, Andrew retorts furiously that he doesn't spend a dime on him, that he attends a public school, and that the camera isn't bought from his money. Richard strikes Andrew, but instead of being quiet, Andrew strikes Richard in a rage. He informs Richard that he now has the ability to eliminate him before tossing him to the ground and walking away. Andrew's mental condition is unstable right now. Matt receives a phone call from Andrew but disregards it since he is dating Cassie. Matt's nose starts to bleed, despite the fact that he hasn't utilized his skills. 
Yet his mind doesn't wander. Andrew is sobbing amid the clouds in the sky, and the clouds shout in response to his rage. Steve approaches him and attempts to soothe him. But when Andrew tells Steve to go, Steve refuses and orders him to return to the ground. Andrew grows angrier, and a bolt of lightning strikes Steve, causing him to fall to the ground and die. Steve's funeral is conducted a few days later, and Andrew is there to shoot it. He captures Cassie and Matt's other classmates at the funeral. He seemed to have no remorse over losing one of his dearest pals. After the wedding, Matt approaches Andrew and asks why he isn't answering his phone calls, but he hangs up. Matt inquired about Steve's accident, how lightning struck while the sky was clear, and what Steve was doing there. Matt coerces Andrew into telling him the truth, but Andrew keeps mute and flees. The following day, Andrew visits Steve's grave and apologizes. He claims that what happened to Steve was an accident in which he lost control. He then returns to the hole where he obtained his talents in order to comprehend the source of his ability, seeing that the grass had grown in a pattern. After that Andrew attends school, where he is mocked for vomiting. Andrew gets upset and yells out to a youngster. Andrew takes out his teeth as he turns to him. Everyone else is terrified after seeing all of this. He reveals the teeth to the camera in the restroom and tells how he extracted them. While Andrew exemplifies how the strong control the weak in this society while recording himself in a junkyard. To illustrate his thesis, he uses the lion and the gazelle, stating that the lion does not feel sorry about eliminating the gazelle. Similarly, when someone eliminates an insect, he feels no regret. He regards himself as a human apex predator. That is, if he is the most dangerous predator, he will not feel guilty about causing injury to anybody. Then, with a movement of his hand, he squeezes the frame of a car laying behind him. Andrew is packing his luggage when Matt comes in and inquires about the school disaster. He is furious and informs Andrew that he has disobeyed the rules, but Andrew reminds him that he has to go to buy his mother's medicine. Matt warns Andrew that if he does not stop harming others, he will have to take action. Matt tries to strike Andrew, but he stops him. Matt flees as he discovers how much Andrew's power has grown. Andrew goes to the pharmacy to get medicine for his mother, but the pharmacist informs him that he must pay and that he has informed his father. He feels dissatisfied and depressed because he cannot afford to purchase the medication that his mother needs. When Richard leaves the home the following day, Andrew dresses in his father's old fireman's outfit. He aims to extort money from others in order to pay for medication. He starts with the guys on his street, who make fun of him after they see him. He tackles them all, and they are all lying around in no time. He snatches all of their money, but he still needs more. He goes to a gas station late at night and grabs all the money from the cash bank. The guard is going to shoot him as soon as he gets out and begins running away. Andrew redirects the gun in the other direction to save his life, but the shot strikes the gasoline tank, causing an explosion in which Andrew is severely hurt. He was taken to the hospital. On hospital CCTV, Richard is seen entering Andrew's room. He sits next to him and begins sobbing, but instead of feeling sorry for his kid, he urges him to apologize since he was not with his wife when she died, and Andrew was the reason. He holds Andrew responsible for Karen's death. Richard yells at Andrew to apologize, but after hearing of his mother's death, Andrew's wrath escalates so much that there is a tremendous explosion, and the wall of the room cracks. Matt, on the other hand, is at a birthday celebration when his nose begins to bleed. It is now clear that the three were linked since their power came from the same source. Matt witnesses an explosion at the hospital and gets certain that it is Andrew. He quickly demands Cassie's vehicle keys, but Cassie wants to accompany him. When they arrive at the hospital, Andrew has Richard upside down with his legs in the air. Matt jumps up and grabs Richard as Andrew lets go of him. Richard is even more enraged by his survival. Matt returns to the car, but Andrew notices them and makes it hard for Matt to flee. He flies their automobile into the air like it's a toy. Cassie becomes terrified and begins screaming. Andrew gets Matt out of the vehicle and leaves Cassie in the automobile. Matt arrives just in time to take Cassie out of the vehicle and bring her to a safe place. He then approaches Andrew, attempting to calm him down. A large police presence was there to cope with the issue. All of this is being covered by news reporters as well. As Andrew's rage grows, Matt pledges to abandon everything and relocate with him far away. Both of them can fly away from here, and no one can catch them. But the vengeance haunts Andrew. He runs over Matt with the bus. Matt and Andrew now engage in combat. Matt's strength is not as great as Andrew's, but he fights him anyway. They both see the city as their ring and hurl automobiles at each other from every structure, even the highway. Throughout the battle, Matt attempts to get Andrew to quit, but he refuses. The cops had surrounded them both. Andrew blows up the police cars after Matt is shot. Then they both land in a plaza, where the cops have encircled them once again. Matt requests that Andrew surrender, but he refuses. The cops start firing, but Andrew manages to avoid all of the shots. Andrew shouts and then unleashes a strong strike that knocks all of the police mobiles back into position. Matt regains his strength and begs Andrew not to attack the cops, but Andrew has transformed into a beast, and his humanity has vanished. Matt has the last answer to Andrew's demise. Matt inserts the statue's spear into Andrew's body. Andrew's corpse hangs still. Matt similarly collapses to the ground when his energy runs out. 
The police come to check on the two, but Matt flees before they can catch up with him. Matt eventually goes to Tibet. He speaks to Andrew on video and apologizes. He claims to understand why he did it, but he refuses to blame himself in any way. He then sets Andrew's camera on a hill overlooking many Tibetan monk temples. Matt says goodbye to Andrew and leaves. 